When Splatoon 2 came out, a special was revealed that I thought was one of the coolest things that I've ever seen. Like, seriously, a superhero landing with a shockwave that does damage to people, and on top of that you can use it in conjunction with a super jump to fly across the map with an explosion? What a cool idea! Splashdown was something that immediately seemed really fun and was intriguing to me back in 2017. However, looking at it now, Splashdown's history is one of being one of if not the worst specials in the game for pretty much the entirety of Splatoon 2's lifespan. Not only that, but after getting reworked into Reef Slider, gaining some attributes of Baller and some notable help, it has once again ended up as one of the worst specials in the entire game for another over a year and counting so far. So are these specials just doomed to fail, or is there a reason they've been consistently one of the worst? Today I'm going to break down the very stupid problems with these very cool specials. And if you enjoyed today's special breakdown, be sure to subscribe to see more. So, first off, what's the problem with Splashdown? Well, in a nutshell, the main issue is that it's a panic button. You press it, you go up in the air, and then you splash down on the ground. And when Splatoon 2 was coming out and they were making Splashdown, Splatoon 1 also had panic buttons, like Kraken and Bubbler. However, the developers decided that maybe Frame 1 panic button specials weren't such a great idea. So, ever since that game, every special has had at least 30 frames of startup before any form of armor is added to you. Because of this, Splashdown has no protection whatsoever, and it has a giant window where it can be shot out of the sky before landing on the ground. So that was the counterplay built into the special, which seemed good, but there was just one problem. The counterplay was not that hard at higher levels. For most people in high X rank, let alone competitive play, Splashdown was predictable. It always went the same height every single time, the timing window was very predictable, and you could always tell when someone had it by using the top of the screen. The counterplay it was basically way too good compared to what the special was doing. But that's okay, we have balance patches to buff it, and that's what the devs did. They buffed it in many different ways, such as having the explosion go really high up in terms of its lethal hitbox, increasing the radius a little bit, having it break certain specials more effectively, like Baller, Bomb Rush, or Bubble Blower. There's just one problem with all of these buffs. To get any of the amazing effects these buffs provided, you kinda had to hit the ground. And the problem the problem was you weren't really making it that far in the first place. So even though a lot of these buffs were really smart in giving it new utility, it just in no way solved the actual problem. On top of that, Splashdown in lower ranks was a problem as well. The devs might not like panic buttons, but guess what? At lower ranks, if you can't flick up and hit that Splashdown, too bad, it basically is a panic button. With the movement and aim skills present in that rank, it's really hard to shoot it down, let alone move out of the way of the explosion. So this special became a noob stomper that was horrible higher up. So depending on what rank you were playing the game, the special was either broken as hell or unbelievably weak and easy to counter. However, to be fair to the special, it did have one part of it that actually worked and is pretty cool. The super jump part. Since you can tell where the person is landing and punish it afterward, it has its own reasonable amount of counterplay, let alone you need a teammate in the spot you want to jump to in the first place, and you're guaranteed to actually hit the ground after you use it, and so you get to reap the effects of all of these amazing buffs. Is that enough on its own to make the special good? Uh, no, having a super jump to be able to use your special is a bit of a problem. However, it was some functionality that actually worked. And on top of that, when going into Splatoon 3, I think the devs understood the problem was, yes, yeah, Splashdown would just get picked off. A beta Splatoon 3 icon even shows a horizontal Splashdown as an early concept for Eve Slider. Later in, it got mixed with a bit of Baller's attributes, mainly the invincibility after the explosion and the fact that, well, you move horizontally now. However, you could tell Tell the devs were scared of making this special too good, man. Have you seen how much of your special is used on startup? You see how much of it you lose if it gets cancelled compared to other specials? If you pop it midair, it doesn't even start going down until you hit the floor. And on top of all of that, it has more startup than some other specials like Trizuka and a completely linear path. Oh, and of course, its ability to break bombs from Splatoon 2 is completely gone for no reason. And I didn't forget this, when the game 
game came out, it didn't even have any invincibility. You would be stuck in all that lag and just get shot and die. And they did all of that because the splashdown could move horizontally. Which does lead to the main difference between Splashdown and Reefsider. With Splashdown, the problem is you died before the explosion happened. With Reefsider, the problem is you die after the explosion happens. Yeah, so now that you can pop it from further away, you can definitely use it in a safe location, especially if it's not being used as a panic button. However, once you explode, even with some invincibility to match your end lag, you still have a little bit of a window where you can get shot afterward before you can really do anything about it. And due to how loud and predictable the special is, it's pretty easy to be aware of it. Slider is definitely better than Splashdown, it keeps up better in this game for sure, and it has also some other nice properties like a 70 giant damage hitbox to combo off of. However, I think the worst attribute of this is they've actually been giving Reef Slider to a lot of weapons that work for it. Dreadringer and S-Blast have combos out of it, and Dapple Duelies and Tetra Duelies have the ability to dodge roll after it. They clearly understand that you want weapons that can combo off of the damage and be more aggressive, but the problem is the special has such horrid end lag and predictability that you're never going to be able to even use that combo. A lot of times you can die before even shooting an S-Blast shot or trying to do a Tetra Dodge roll. I think at the end of the day, they're just kind of afraid of buffing Slider. And I can understand it, it definitely seems like it could be strong casually, but if you're going to put a special in the game that's a giant predictable explosion, you got to give some agency to the special user. Slider is the simplest special in the game. There really isn't a whole lot of depth there. And so because of that you need to allow the player to have other options when the special ends. Things they can do that aren't predictable, but the insane amount of end lag that this special provides means that you don't have any options. You're predictable even after the special's over. As long as it adds some delay with invincibility, would it even hurt to shave off most of the end lag anyway? I mean, any option you have with the main weapon is still a main weapon. The only difference is you have some paint around you from the explosion. You can still counter the main weapon in the same way you normally would, and because you can tell where they're going and where they're gonna blow up, you'll know what they're doing far in advance. That's plenty of counterplay in my opinion. So if they were willing to do that alongside maybe getting rid of some of the stupider weaknesses it has, like not being able to pop it in the air and have it start draining instantly, then I think it could end up in a solid spot. Again, compared to Splashdown, you can actually get the explosion off on this one. That gives you a lot more to do. However, there's one more change I really want for Reef Slider. Why not keep the Splashdown jump? Just I don't know, pull out the shark and explode or something. Tacticooler gives you maximum quick super jump, and it's way more common to jump to each other than Splatoon 2, so this would have way better of an effect and was never unhealthy in that game in the first place. I think it'd just be cool. To me, it's clear that Slider doesn't really have anything that prevents it from ever being good. They fixed that when they went between the games. But to be able to make Reef Slider good, they gotta be willing to give it some actual impactful buffs and not just some small ones. Hopefully, we can see that in the future. Thanks for watching. By the way, I know someone's gonna point out if I don't mention Splashdown in single player. Very different thing, but obviously when you're not fighting enemies who can shoot it down and you're panicking against robots, it's totally fine for it to be a panic button.